In the fifth event of seven events during the games, I snapped my leg completely in half. Hi, I'm Nancy, I'm a Marine Corps veteran. I am a college student right now studying physical education and social work and I'm a professional strongman. So last year was my second year at the official strongman games and I suffered a catastrophic injury that probably would have broken another athlete had I not had the mindset I have been building for a very long time. I was very weird athletically. I had originally started dancing when I was in middle school thinking I would be this graceful, beautiful girl across the stage and as I got older and I kept getting more muscular I realized my strength is too much for me to try and be this dainty person. I was a runner up until I deployed and had nowhere to actually run on that base and then I started powerlifting on that base in Bulgaria and when I came back from deployment maybe less than a year later I had done some powerlifting meets and then I met my coach and pretty quickly fell in love with Strongman. I met my current coach when I was still active duty in the Marine Corps and he invited me out to try some Strongman events one weekend. While I was still powerlifting, I thought I wouldn't love it and I fell in love almost instantly. I've never looked back. I've also never switched coaches in that time and that was back in 2018. Once you get that itch in a sport or your niche or whatever your passion is, you can't look away. And once I met Strongman, that was it. Strongman was my baby. I wouldn't be who I am without Strongman. And you know, a lot of people are like, Strongman shouldn't be your identity. I'm fine with that. Strongman is my identity. I claim that. That is the most powerful part of my life. And it has done so many amazing things for my life. The next year in 2019, I signed up for my first national show thinking, I'm just gonna go see what it's like. I'm just gonna go play and I won. I swept the floor without realizing I was sweeping the floor. And again, I don't say that to be cocky. I say that because at that time, I had the strength. I had the technique for the most part. I was still kind of new. But I didn't have the mental fortitude and focus to take me further than a national show. So I was winning because I had strength and that was it. But in Strongman, as you get to bigger shows, as you get to world level stages, international shows where you have people coming from literally anywhere in the world, you cannot just leave it up to your strength and chance and hoping that your performance is the same as last time. You have to have every technique down to the core. You have to be able to stand there and calm yourself down and say, I'm capable, I can do this, I'm strong, and I'm gonna do this because I've done it before. This mindset isn't something that you can just achieve it's something you have to hone in on year after year, event after event. And I really started to work on it at the end of 2021. I took my second national title and I moved into my first official strongman games thinking I'm the hottest thing out there. And I was complacent. I didn't have plan B's for when things went wrong. I wasn't as laser focused as I needed to be. And I took fourth place. I was just a few points shy of a podium. And then I took that and I started to really work on who I am as an athlete. Any serious athlete will understand that if you're not first, it doesn't matter. You train for first, you train to be the best. So then we move into the 2022 official strongman games where the catastrophic injury happened and I am an athlete I had never seen before. I was an athlete that my partner, my coach, my teammates could not believe were in front. They could not believe this person was in front of them. Everyone that competed with me that weekend was telling me that I was somebody they couldn't recognize. I wasn't paying attention to external factors. I was very adaptable. There was a hurricane that was affecting every part of the event all weekend long. I was laser focused on myself. I wasn't paying attention to the points. I didn't know I was in first until maybe the third event. I came off the first event upset that I didn't do better. And my boyfriend was like, you just won, relax, move on to the next event. It's my second year at the official Strongman Games 
and I suffered the worst injury of my life, an injury that would honestly deter most people from coming back to the platform. I was in the fifth event of seven events, carrying a yoke that was fashioned out of an old Volkswagen bug across the competition floor when I stepped out too far. And the rock of the car, plus the 620 pounds of it, shot through my right leg and snapped my tibia and fibula faster than I could even understand what happened. And when I say that, it's because I didn't know what happened. I went into shock so quickly that I fell to the ground, I screamed, still not understanding what happened. I never felt it. I heard it. And if you've ever had your ears pierced or something puncture your body and you've heard the skin break, that is what I heard in my brain. I heard my entire, I heard both bones snap, but I did not feel it. And I'm lucky for that. I know I'm lucky that I didn't feel it, but it was one of those moments where someone doesn't have to tell you what happened for you to know it's wrong. So I'm sitting at the bottom of the car. I blacked out from standing up to sitting down. All of a sudden there's like five or six people trying to get me out of this car. And I'm looking down at my leg and I can't see anything wrong but I know I can't stand on it. Didn't even try. And I'm breaking down, I'm crying, and everyone thinks I'm in the worst pain of my life, and I'm not yet. I'm in the worst emotional pain of my life. I had never felt something so crushing in my entire life. And I don't say any of these things to be cocky. Please don't misunderstand me when I say these things. A true champion, a true seasoned athlete will understand when you are sitting in first place the way I was, I was in a 10 point lead. I was three feet from the finish line when I snapped my leg. I didn't finish that event and I stayed in first place. So to know that I wasn't going on to event six and seven was the most crushing thing I've ever felt in my life. Once I realized my leg was broken, they put me on the stretcher. They're about to take me out and I'm asking, can I stay, can I stay? Like, I wanna see my fellow 73 kilogram women go. And they're like, no, you aren't showing pain. We are so concerned about you. We need to get you to the hospital right now. They're checking me to see if I'm having a heart attack. And the whole time I'm like, I'm giggling, you know, the fentanyl, the morphine, all that stuff starting to kick in that they're giving me on site. And I'm just like, I don't understand why I can't at least see this through. If I'm not getting my world title, why can't I see this through? In that moment, I went from completely distraught, knowing I lost my world title because it was mine. I was in a 10 point lead and I knew if I follow through, if I finish the Circus Dumbbell event, if I do the Stone event, I will take this world title. This will be my first world title. I have put everything in my life on hold for this. This is what I came here for. And as soon as that happened, I knew it was over. So I spend the entire ambulance ride, the first three hours I'm sitting in the ER, completely unaware of pain. Still don't actually know if my leg's broken. Fell, fell for the false hope that maybe I had twisted something because the doctor said it and I latched onto it. They come and show me my x-ray finally. And about three hours after that, they conscious sedate me and set my leg because they had to put it back together in order for the surgeon to do their work the next day. I wake up for the, from the conscious sedation in the most pain I've ever felt in my life. I couldn't comprehend how I could go from not feeling anything but emotionally distraught to now feeling like my leg had been completely sawed off. Coming home from the hospital, it wasn't, I'm done with strongman, it wasn't what's next for me. It was instantly, how quickly can we walk? How quickly can we be back at the games? How quickly can we do this? I remember sitting in the hospital telling my partner, okay, I probably won't compete in January, I probably won't compete in April, and he's like, you're not competing at the beginning of next year. And once I got home and my boyfriend had to go back to work, he had built this bedroom downstairs for me in our living room, taking care of me, doted on me, but he eventually had to go back to work. It was the days where I would sit in the bed by myself before I could drive, before I could walk, and just getting to the kitchen to warm something up would break me down because it hurt, it hurt to get up, it hurt to let the blood flow. And that's when the depressive thoughts would creep in. 
that's when the I'll never be myself, this will always hurt crept in. And it's easy to see how someone could be very deterred in that moment, very depressed, or decide to completely hang up a sport like that. Having this insanely strong mindset that I've been building since the end of 2021, going into this injury, pulled me through the injury. If I had given in to the negative thoughts and the awful things creeping in, and the doctors, just physical therapists, ortho doctors, x-ray techs, nurses, every single person telling me, you'll never run again, you'll never squat again, you'll never do this, you don't need to do this. All of those things I had to throw away and say, it's fine, we don't agree, but I'm coming through this. And I did come through this. And I wouldn't have come through this had I not stuck to my mindset and continuing to better my mindset. Anytime I went to the gym, when I first had my boot, when I could barely walk, when I had crutches and I wanna cry and I'm telling myself, is this worth it? The more motivational Nancy on my shoulder is saying, yeah, because you don't wanna get to the end of your life and look back and be like, you really let that pull you out of the sport you love most in the world. The, the feeling I have knowing that I have physical independence again, knowing that I'm in charge of my life, I can take care of myself in not only athletic situations, but emergency situations. Because I've grown stronger from this injury is more powerful than I can explain to anyone. If you've had an injury and you've come back from it, you know what it's like. But to anyone who's doubting themselves and wanting to give up, I urge you not to because the mental power and the power that it gives you for the rest of your life is just unpalpable. I would say to be in the top 1% of your niche, whether it be a sport or a skill, you quite literally need to be willing to die for it. And when I say that, you have to be willing to give it your all. You have to be willing to give up the social things that don't serve you, the drinking, the partying, the staying up late. You have to be willing to commit to just simple hydration, simple nutrition, meeting your gym expectations. If you miss one session once every single week, that's 52 sessions in a year. You have to be willing to put other things on hold and follow this through until the end. If you say you're gonna do something like this, you can't half-ass it. Being able to stand there now, knowing I've done things before, if I get nervous about something because I think I'm gonna get hurt, there's a rod in my leg. I'm not gonna hurt my leg again the same way I did before. However, I still need to be able to stand there and tell myself I'm strong, I'm capable, I've done this before, we'll do it again. And anyone can do that. You just have to find the mindset within yourself. No one can teach you a powerful mindset. It's something you have to build through your own trials and tribulations. And if I choose to compete this year at OSG, my mindset better be on point or I will mentally crumble before I physically crumble. Maybe when the negativity creeps in, you need to find a resource that tells you about someone who's experienced something similar. And while you can't compare yourself exactly to them, you can look at some of the tools they might use. Because all of these things, the self-talk, the practice how you compete, the laser focus, all of those things are tools that you have to learn how to achieve on your own anyway. So regardless of a community or not, you're the only one on the platform. You're the only one out there competing. I can't hear a single person when I'm out there doing an event aside from two people, and that's my partner and my coach. And that's because I've learned to only hone into those voices. But it's just you out there. At the end of the day, you have to be confident in yourself. You have to be able to carry yourself because it's just you. So screw the negativity. Why are you doing it? Why are you here? I would also say find, find a community, a community that drives you. Because even on the days when motivation is fleeting or you feel like your drive is lost or your focus is lost, having a small community or a big community or people you can rely on to hold you accountable and to bring you back up, that's very powerful. I've met my closest friends um, my partner, I've, I wouldn't be who I am without Strongman. Yes, I had an insanely awful injury at the end of last year, but I'm still qualified for the official Strongman Games at the end of 2023. I have the chance to go back and take my world title 
just like anyone else who might be watching this video, you will always have some kind of chance to go back and reclaim what you might have lost, whether it be to just poor training, not enough strength, maybe you messed up your technique or you had an accident like I did, or it's just out of your control. I believe that if you work hard enough, coming back is even better. It's a more powerful story and it's a more powerful meaning to you because winning doesn't really mean anything if you didn't have to fight like how to get, get there. I'm somebody that's gonna come back from this injury better. I'm not looking to be my old self. I'm looking to come back as a new Nancy. Robot leg and all, don't care. I'm here for it. Are you gonna compete? I'm not sure yet. You'll have to, you'll have to follow me to see. Follow my journey to see.